Unit 7, Lesson 1, Part 2. Sorting and Recording. Greetings everyone and welcome to our second part of lesson number one. Today we're going to be sorting and recording information. We're going to sort, which means that we're going to put things in groups or categories based on similarities, features, things that make them the same. We call those features or things that make things similar, we call them characteristics. A characteristic could be the way something looks, the size of something, where something can be found. Let's look at a couple of things that we're going to be sorting today. These are a group of animals. We're going to take these animals and sort them. Well, let's first look at a group of characteristics that we could probably sort these animals into. A couple of the characteristics or features that we have listed here, we have how certain animals might look, certain things that make them similar. You have some animals that are furry, some that are scaly, some that have fins, gills, claws, teeth, fangs, some that have smooth skin. We might look at where animals live. Some live in salt water or oceans, cold places, like when we think of South Pole, or we think of Antarctica, the Arctic. Some might even live in woodlands or forest. We might get also a group of things based off of how they move. Some animals crawl, some animals swim, some animals fly, some animals walk. So there are many different features that make animals alike. Let's try to sort out our, our pictures of some of our animals in one of these um, types of category. So the type of category I think I'm going to choose is where they live. Let's look at a couple of these animals and see if we can group them based off of where they live. Well, I have a few animals here that we're going to look at. First, I'd like you to look at and see the seahorse. The seahorse happens to live in ocean or water. So we'll start his category or group here. Next, we have the polar bear. The polar bear is noted to live in very cold climates. I'm going to put him over here. We have this animal, a California mountain king snake. You can find him in a forest or a wooded area. I'll put him right here in the middle. Let's see if I can find other animals that could fit some of these categories. Sea turtle, where you think he is going? In ocean, water. We have an orca whale. Oh yeah, he's definitely going into the ocean. Then we have Mr. Brown Bear. He would go in a wooded area or forest. What group do you think this clownfish would join? Yeah, he's definitely a water type of animal. We have a seal. Seal, and the seal, this seal here, lives in an arctic area, very, very cold area. So he'll go with the polar bear. We have the arctic fox. Of course, he's going to go with the polar bear. Here we have a bull shark, definitely water. And last but not least, our friend, the bottlenose dolphin water. 
So, we've taken the feature of where these animals lived and we've grouped them. Now, we're going to take the information, the data that we have, and we're going to put it into a table. Let's see what we can do. Well, if you know anything about tables, tables have to have a title because we have to know, well, how are we grouping them? We're grouping about where they live. And where they live, I have a big old college word for that. And you know I love my college words. It's called a habitat. So, our title is habitats. Next, we're going to chart this using a table. So let's see how we would draw our table out. We're going to use a box table and since we're talking about three different areas, I've divided the boxes up into three different sections. I need to label each box with the type of place that each animal lives in. Well, we said we had animals that lived in the ocean. We have animals that live in wooded areas. We're going to call that woodland. And we have animals that live in the Arctic Ocean. I'm sorry, that live in the Arctic cold places. There is a such place as the Arctic Ocean now. Today, in order to record our data, we're going to use something called a tally mark. When we use the tally system, the tally system requires us to use a line to symbolize one. Let's count how many animals live in the ocean. One, two, three, four, five, six. So each line will represent each one of those animals. Let's write it. One, two, three, four. Uh-oh, something I've got to tell you. In order to help us count this out, part of this system, you have to know that the number five is special. So since it's special, because it's easy to count by, what we do in our tally system is that we have four lines and then we cross those four lines when we get to the number five. I'll show you how to make the number five. I have my four lines and when I want to do my fifth line, I have to cross it with a diagonal. This lets me know that this is the number five in the tally system. But I have six of them. So since I have five, I have to add one more to make six. Next, I'm going to look at the animals that are in the woodland area. Oops. They are one, two. One, two. Two marks represent the tally mark. That's a, just a quick tally, or just a quick way of counting. Next, I'm going to look at the Arctic. One, two, three. Let's put it down here. One, two, three. So, here, this is my tally chart, and my information lets me know how many animals are in or live in those areas. Well, I can also make another chart using numerals or numbers. I'll keep the same title, my title being Habitats. I'm going to draw my same three boxes to represent my three areas. Now I have to put my labels, ocean, woodland, arctic. 
But this time, instead of using tally marks to represent how many animals live in each one of those sections, I'm going to use digits. Come along and watch me. If this is 5 plus 1, I know there's 6 animals here on my chart that can live in the ocean. So I'm going to represent that by using the digit 6. 1, 2 lets me know how many animals live in the woodlands. 2. I'm going to represent that by using the digit 2. How many animals live in the Arctic? Well, I have 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to put the digit 3. Wow! Today, I've sorted pictures of animals into groups looking at their characteristics what makes them alike, what things or features make them alike. Then I took that information or data or data and I used a tally system and a number system to make a chart to record my information. I want to thank you so much for joining me for Lesson 1, Part 2 on sorting and recording.